everyone. Welcome back to Play Casket with your hosts, Proc of the Goblin. And Ghost, your co-host. And today we're going to get a little nostalgic. We're going to talk about Nintendo 64. All things Nintendo 64. Even some bad things about Nintendo 64. Even some things that are adjacent to Nintendo 64. <laughs> Everything Nintendo 64. Episode 41, Get In or Get Out. I still love that that, that slogan. That ad slogan was still one of the <laughs> best like to this day. Anyway, so basically we're going to talk about... I mean, Sega's still pretty good. Sega! That's well, it. That, 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 that was, I don't know, That was was that really an ad slogan, though? Because that was going on for a while. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. That I, one's a weird one. I, 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 miss, I, miss, uh, I miss them having slogans, though. Because even, even with the Wii, it was, we would like to play, but nobody else had any slogans. Nobody else? Yeah, no. Nobody else has one right now, either. Get like, good. Get like, good, scrubs. Like, uh, the Switch is just a snap. Yeah. So. Okay. You know, I guess, you know. They're they're all they're all gonna just start having uh, advertisements where it's just sounds. <laughs> Microsoft X One X. <laughs> well, I guess it has that. I mean, it has that startup sound. <clears throat> so, so yeah. So I think that's what's probably gonna happen. But anyway, back on actual track. Everything <laughs> sixty four. So you have an curious thing about the Nintendo sixty four. So let's go ahead and have you start. So yeah, okay. why why are we choosing the sixty four? Well, um. With the just the overall opinion of it, of it I, I think uh, like what I remember most about about it, I don't know. I think everybody's just had rose tinted glasses on it, but maybe maybe this and it should stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because I remember like Banjo Kazooie when everybody wanted um, uh, what was that one remake that spiritual successor uh, Banjo and Kazooie. Yeah, Banjo Kazooie. Well, what what was the um, spiritual successors? We're not. Oh, ukulele. Ukulele. There yeah. we go. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> ukulele came out and it just got like review bombed because everybody said, "Oh, the controls are bad and um, it plays like shit." And it's it like, plays like a dated sixty-four game. <gasps> because wasn't that what you wanted? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing is, the people who the, the thing is is the people who paid for it, the people uh-huh. who actually funded that that system and stuff weren't complaining because they were they were told what they're getting. Mm-hmm. So most of them, I also had some minor bugs and stuff like that, like some of like the weird fundamental uh, things. Like I've complained about the mm-hmm. the uh, checkpoint system. That's like. Only you, you when you die, you go to the last time you went through anything, like yeah. any door. But it's so, still, it was still in the so original the mechanics, Banjo Kazooie. The, the mechanics, yeah, the mechanics and stuff like that, fundamentally were like Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. Um, the problem was because of how large the levels were, mm-hmm. made that very glaringly problematic. Yeah. Meaning that you should have had better checkpoints or something. Yeah. Like it should have had something. So. So. With with, with that, I think. We do see it with rose tinted glasses, just because it's like, well, I play this as my kid, and it's it's because even for me, when I when I play certain games, I'm like, it, it brings that that lightning in the bottle back again, and then <clears throat> you really think about it, it's like, okay, I really enjoy this, but I don't think a modern audience really really enjoy it. But um, at the same time, too, uh, we grew up with the transition of 2D to 3D, so. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just this huge leap, I guess. With with, with it was with probably yeah, it was fidelity. probably yeah. It was probably the biggest leap we have ever seen in video games. Yeah, is getting so. into that three D <laughs> realm, and even with people going, well, the HD. Don't forget the HD no, one when we finally went to HD. We went to HD. No one gives a fuck. Yeah, like we can literally make the old games look like old games on HD, and it would still play like the old games, and it would play. It would be the like you, the HD two D game will still be a two D game. Yeah, regardless of what you do. Yeah. So, so I, I think it was like just from a two D plane to a three D world mm-hmm. really blew everybody's mind. So because you're like you're stepping into a new world, it was kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it was a huge impression on everybody. <laughs> so I think the sixty fours era really changed everybody's way of just how you designed games because you're not stuck in that 2d plane anymore and like I, I honestly i agree a lot with that um i think that was where i stopped doing rpgs and caring about rpgs and like really appreciating the platformer mm-hmm. um so for the nintendo 64 it was like that was 
everyone was trying to compete with Nintendo on the 64. Oh yeah, even Mario though clones, like, even though there was some there was some on the PlayStation, they were very like linear, but they approached it differently. So uh, Crash was still technically a 3D platformer, but it was it was an overall it was an overall uh, like Crash Course. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why I named Crash. Right, yeah. it was a Crash Course. You went down a lane, and then you got basically ranked on how much stuff you did what kind of stuff you did what type of secrets you found and all that stuff but it wasn't it, like it was very one directional it was basically how side schoolers were but literally just turned to a different direction yeah right now i'm not saying that's not bad i'm not i'm not saying it's it's bad i'm i'm saying it it, it it was good in of its own right but it was not this like 3d roam platformer Mm-hmm. Which then became the 3D platformer, which overarchingly just covered a lot of other 3D platformers. Yeah, but um, so stuff like Medieval kind of touched on that and stuff, but nothing, nothing hit that level like a lot of the 64 games did. Mm. Little 64 games, like the fundamentally, in order to make games for multiple consoles at the time, you had to literally basically develop it from scratch again. Mm-hmm. So every time somebody had an experience with something that was on both systems, they would always play differently. Yeah, it was and like it was so drastic. And I wanted to like kind of touch base with one of those here in a bit, but that's where that's where I found out my love for three D platformers from here on out. Like it was just so cool because. For me as a kid, I was like I was stepping into a huge world, and as much as I liked some of the epics out there of like Legend of Zelda and stuff, I liked the weird whimsical worlds of 3D platformers because it wasn't just one world. I was I was stepping into a lot mm-hmm. with a platformer, so I thought I was like that was really cool. Yeah, going to a circus and a desert and a forest, like oh yeah, yeah, give me that, you know, <laughs> instead of just one one very open field with some dungeons somewhere, You're like. And not not to downplay Orcarina time, but I am. I love Orcarina. But um, <laughs> it was. Uh, but I would agree. It, it is like the number one game everybody remembers. But I still love Orcarina. Yeah. No. It was. <laughs> it was one of the things, right? Um. So it, with that having anything that kind of even touches that type of experience with 3D platformers, I buy. Like I just I, I will open up and give me that shit. Yeah. Like, I funded with ukulele. I actually do enjoy the ukulele in spite of a lot of the problems it does have. So I'm looking really forward to its sequel. But there's a lot of other things out there. I'm like, just port the old one. Yeah. Glover. Port Buck Bumble. Port. Um, Vex. Vex. Yeah, Port <laughs> Vex. That was on the GameCube, though. I was not thinking that, that far ahead. But <laughs> Ty Tasmanian Tiger got ported. Yeah. So did Legend of K. But Which is interesting because I, I, I think Mario 64 kind of like... Uh, Changed a lot of people's per- perspective on how to make and navigate through a 3D world too. Yeah. So. No, I do think I do think uh, I do think Mario 64 was the reason they added the DualShock controllers later on in the PlayStation Life. Mm-hmm. I really do. But let's go ahead and talk about our biggest memories. Like, what's the biggest memory you had with the Nintendo 64? AV cables. God damn those! I don't miss them because. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just remember as a kid when um, we, we, what is it? We we had a TV with AV cables and then it died. So my friend gave me like their old ass TV. You had to get the VCR and then you had to plug oh it in. Oh my god, the VCR <laughs> reroute. Yeah, I, I did that too. Oh uh, like, shit! So that I was like, and then um, I, I can't remember how many how many TVs I went through, but certain ones like were good, certain ones were just shit. I think the oldest one we had was just the. Uh, that component cable, right? Was mm-hmm. that single, that single one? Yeah, mm-hmm. had to hook it through our t- our uh, VCR, and then um, finally we got an adapter. And then the adapter would be funny too, so you had to, like hold it a certain way, make sure it's not hanging. Yeah. You put that like that little like deck of cards underneath it, kind of yeah. rest it just right, yeah, so it doesn't buzz every time you play. <laughs> <laughs> Mario, <laughs> yeah. Yep. But when it worked, it worked fine, though, so... <laughs> but... Um, yeah, no, I, I remember a couple of those. Uh, oddly enough, the ones that needed the auxiliary cable that required the adapters or rerouting to the DCR was the ones that lasted the longest, too. <laughs> like, it was the only way we were able to do anything sometimes because that was the only TVs we had in our house. <laughs> but, um... 
Yeah, my uh, I have another memory that's kind of like that. It was more on the end of the 64, though, uh, was Cocker's Bad Fur Day. Mm-hmm. Not, not playing it, but, like, kind of how, how I bought into it and stuff. So I... Th- I remember following with Nintendo Power that Conquer, you know, Conquer's platformer was coming out and stuff, and that was going to be cool. And I've already bought up like Mario, Banjo Kazooie One and Two, Glover, um, Buck Bumble, kind of like a weird shooter platformer type. So it was kind of what I I would associate it with. Mm-hmm. Um, later, the, obviously, I know the differences, but then of course i had the spiros and stuff like that on the playstation so i was like i was i was ready for the next one right mm-hmm. i was ready and then you don't hear too much and then i found out oh it's because it's a it's this like new game that's very edgy and found out i can't buy it as a youngin <laughs> and i was very upset and i eventually convinced my mother about getting it now my my mom is actually this one of the smarter type of people she actually knew what the e- esrb rating was before i could say anything mm-hmm. so n- unlike everybody else what does m mean it means mom must buy it <laughs> oh okay like that's not that's not how it worked my mom's yeah. like that's full of bullshit what's in this pay attention to what your kids buy yeah people yeah. please stop being a stupid parent <laughs> i will make fun of you for it otherwise you, but you no. notice that yeah I will make get, it. Yeah. Otherwise, I, you you end up spending two thousand dollars on uh, Pro Evolution Soccer, right? Or, ew. <laughs> <laughs> or five thousand dollars of Sonic rings. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, but no. Uh, like so, my mom's like bullshit. What's in this? So I kind of kind of <laughs> explained it to her. Now I didn't know content exactly why mm-hmm. it's that, uh, but I did tell her like this is. And she's like, well, what else is in it? Like that's all I know. Yeah. So eventually, she like walked up and she was gonna get it. And the, the game stopped and play kind of pulled her to the side. I was like, yo, so this is what this and this, and this is going to happen. So she glared at me. I was like, so I'm going to buy this. You can't play it in front of your brothers. And I just I crossed my heart, hope to die. I did not play it in front of my brothers. Yeah, so okay. I was like super excited. I like, I had to wait for my brothers to kind of go to school. And there was like some other like weird thing for my little school. Cause we went through, I was in middle school. So I was still kind of waiting for a bunch of stuff. And it was during the <clears throat> particular shooting has mm-hmm. happened but um so i got to be home and like i turned it on i started playing I'm like oh i'm 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 going i'm going against the brain i'm so i'm so edgy i'm so cool i'm so awesome <laughs> like i finally get to be like the cool kids you know like, like jonathan taylor thomas yeah and yeah yeah you know all sorts of stuff and i i was like enjoying it i'm like what the hell i'm peeing on things what and i'm all like <laughs> drunk and have a hangover and i'm like what the hell so i'm like kind of the thing that kind of threw me for a moment, and I had to kind of like pause and kind of just like think about what I just did, <laughs> was the sunflower scene yeah. in that game. So <laughs> basically, you gotta get this in a syn- synopsis. You get basically gotta get a drunk bee over to a very bashful sunflower, and that bashful sunflower is very well endowed, and that drunk bee just gotta tickle her fancy, and then she's just like radiant and just like bouncing around with these huge knockers like what did i do (laughs) and so i'm like kind of like jumping around like i jump against characters and walls and stuff and then it hit me i'm bouncing on her tits (laughs) and it was like the weirdest thing for me i kind of like had to like it was just just bouncing and she's giggling and I'm just sitting there and I'm not even moving and I'm just like trying to process the actual things that are happening in the game yeah. right now for Adult humor. Welcome yeah. to it. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? Like I wasn't like I wasn't even at that at that point where I'm like giggling like ooh, it's so adult. Like I was just still like, I did not expect this. This was not something like I wasn't embarrassed or anything. I was just like, Whoa, this is in a game? Yeah. Like like I've seen some stuff in some movies, but this is going on. What the <laughs> hell? And that was like the biggest memory for me because I, I had to treat it like it was like a secret book that mm. could ruin our entire family's lives yeah, for like okay. a while. And like I hit it, <laughs> but it was like such a nothing burger overall when I look back at it yeah. and stuff. Like there was a lot more funner moments and stuff. The the whole um, sacrificing of the baby T-Rex scene and stuff was actually pretty funny for me. Like that was, <laughs> that was one of my favorite ones, but uh, yeah, I had to hide it and stuff. But it, like, honestly, when, when I older, I got, I found out my brother was also playing it behind my back and mm-hmm. stuff. Cause he found it a couple of times and yeah, I was okay. like, he's like, whatever. And I was like, well, why the hell was I hiding it? Yeah. Like this pisses me <laughs> off. So that was like my huge moment 
in in the 64's life but I was like I was all into platformers and stuff but that platformer like kind of set a weird bar for other expectations of what could happen oh, okay. like I was just okay okay that's uh that's a thing now <laughs> but uh what about uh your greatest game best game yeah Ocarina of Time and Star Fox 64 Normie. I, <laughs> I really like those um I, I think uh, Star Fox 64 was like kind of gave me that love for those flight sims and those like rail shooters. Right. Um, but I, I like the like the camaraderie and the quippiness of the characters in Star Fox, and it it it, it brings you back to that like really fun like you're an ace pilot and you're like shooting off at, with your friends and just like all the all the memorable quippy lines that the characters would always have. Yeah. <laughs> I can't shake them. I can't shake the barrel roll. Yeah, do a barrel roll. So yeah, all yeah. the fun, fun quippiness. As for Zelda, um, I don't know. It's just I just remember playing it with my siblings, and they're like super enthralled, and we were all like really, really into it, just trying to figure it out all together of us, just trying to figure out what did where to go next, and. Um, getting stuck for like weeks on end i think the fire temple and the water temple was hell <laughs> but when you go back and play it it's, it's actually not that bad but um just getting cursed i think the fire temple was like the most egregious one because we couldn't we couldn't figure out what to do next and the one thing that drove me insane was uh <laughs> you finally get the, the map and the compass and you're like oh i know where to go now and because you see like a treasure chest like okay this is the key to get me to the boss or not, not, not the boss key, but it's the it's it's locked, and here's this key, and um, you know, there's a locked door. You think you find a treasure chest, and you think that's where it's gonna take you, and you open it up, and it's like fifty rupees. You're like, no, I need a key. <laughs> <laughs> here's fifty rupees, though. Yeah, I'm like I'm at nine nine nine. I'm I've been trying to figure out what to do next for my wallet. Be my wallet be overfloweth. <laughs> yeah. And like I've been trying to figure out what to do next. Yeah, and I can't find the next treasure chest. So that drove me insane. I got fifty different ideas to shove each one of these rupees up somewhere right now. That's all help me, God, right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. Uh, I think Zelda wasn't as big of an impact for me. Mm -hmm. It was more like I think, like I really, I really liked it. I was really like I was one of the kids, obviously, buy into hypes all the time, all the time too. Mm -hmm. So it's not anything special, but. Uh, I do believe it was the reason why I started because it, it, it released sometime between my birthday and Christmas and every time I asked for, for it from my mother she's like well you could wait for Christmas or your birthday I'm like there's no time I got no time to do this right now mm -hmm. she's like well then you can work ha 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 and I'm like 12 <laughs> I'm like guess what bitch I started working like under the counter for people cleaning up like apartment hallways and stuff like that. The mm -hmm. ones that you go through, like I was doing all sorts of that, like working under the table, getting paid like 50, 60 bucks, busting my ass all day. Right. Mm -hmm. And I finally get them. So I get like games and like my, my mother used to use it as a leverage to not have me spend money and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. then I suddenly just started having more games than anticipated. <laughs> and she's like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> I'm like, it's like, I got a racket. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's actually like Zelda got me my first job when you think about it. Oh, okay. Like that's how it worked. <laughs> and you didn't <clears throat> like it, right? Yeah. No, it was, uh, I didn't like that job. It was horrible. And that <laughs> like little vacuum backpack thing like burned, burned my back pretty bad. Oh, okay. But I worked really hard and got that. That was, that was my thing. But uh, that's not what my favorite games were actually. You and I. <laughs> Like, even though that was a huge moment for me to start buying games, it actually helped me buy, like, games that I wouldn't normally pay attention to. And that's actually why I got, like, Buck Bumble, which is one of the ones that I really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And even though it aged like fine milk now, mm -hmm. like, the song is still amazing. That intro song yeah. is amazing, <laughs> period. That was the reason why I was like, you know what? This game kind of looks cool. I was thinking it might have been, a, like, a Earthworm Jim game. And I was severely disappointed with 3D already. I'm like, eh, let's, let's give it a go. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And only because that song, like, really got me hooked. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep playing this because I keep getting that song. That's awesome. <laughs> so there's that. 
but one of the other ones that really like my second one was uh glover Mm -hmm. um one of the things was i started doing the platformers as i said it did so many different things that was like this isn't like but mario or bench kazooie like this is this is cool Mm-hmm. Like I started like floating on water and doing like weird circus acts on the ball and started changing the ball around and stuff I'm like this is actually really cool. Like I was I was actually really stoked with it. I enjoyed it a lot. Like I loved all the mechanics and stuff. And I didn't find out. And this is this is what I talk, talked about earlier. Is uh, I did not find out about the fact that they had same games develop for two different systems but they had to develop so differently you know mm-hmm. they had to rush out and do it differently that the glover version the ps the playstation version of the uh glover game mm-hmm. is so bad that when i used to talk about it, I'm like man i used to love Glover, and i have somebody over around and they're like i hate that that was so broken that was such a broken mess i'm like are, are we talking about the same game <laughs> Oh, you sure okay. you didn't touch Buzz, Bubsy? Because I'm I'm pretty sure I'd agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. And it turned out that uh, like later on, later like I didn't know why, but later on I found out like I I found out some kind of like his little bits of history and stuff, and I was like, oh, it's because this like all like, like most of the puzzles can be done with just the marble instead of actually twi- turning like the marble couldn't hit underwater switches because it's not light heart heavy enough mm-hmm. but the bowling ball can mm-hmm. but it moves slower so you kind of have to adjust like the, there's all that type of stuff nope the marble can literally solve 80 percent of the thing and you don't have to do okay. anything because they didn't do the same uh like physics to each ball and stuff like that and it was just a bad it port was, it was a, just a bad bad port uh, okay and it was so bad that like that is literally like so stark of a contrast. Like, no, this game's horrible. And then you have other people like, no, this game's good. And it was just, it was mind blowing yeah. how drastically different it was. So, mm, okay. I don't know. We'll make our own. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there, there it, it, it's actually kind of funny because there's some people who are trying to uh, uh, steal people's money by saying, oh, yeah, I have uh, Glover 2 and the, like the Glover post and like i own all the rights to it and stuff and turns out they don't and they almost <laughs> ran away with like twelve thousand oh, dollars out geez. of kickstarter because they were gonna make a glover too yeah. and stuff and that glover too never happened so let's make our own well apparently uh what is it p key i think that's what you pronounce it mm-hmm. uh is doing a uh steam port of it right now oh okay um uh, Let's see how it works. I, honestly, I, they're saying, "Oh, it's it's gonna it's gonna skip the switch." Blah blah blah. They're not gonna do anything. I think after they're done focusing on the Steam port, they're gonna try to port it to a system that most people are gonna buy it on, and it's not gonna be the Xbox or PlayStation. Okay. Like it's just not expected on the Switch. Like that's just how it's gonna be. Also, I was thinking about a uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Why don't mm-hmm. we just make our own? Like. <laughs> I don't know. I, like, if I theoretically was making them, I don't, I, I don't, I don't do much lewd or crude humor mm-hmm. like that consistently and find it funny. Mm-hmm. Like a couple here and there, the tongue in cheek type stuff is more my thing. Uh, so me making a Conqueror's Bad Fur Day two or a spiritual b- Bad Fur Day, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think I, I don't think we would be the, I don't think we would be the group to do it for. I don't know, but we got a lot of uh, furries, so they could probably figure something out. <laughs> let them let them do be bad. <laughs> a commission a bunch bad. of art. They could all commission and make their own. They have enough money to pay thousands <laughs> of dollars in really raunchy commissions, but they can't have a one that they could just make their own video game. Like what? What? What world do you guys all live do it, in? guys? Do it. You know, come on now, get get your head in the game, <laughs> invest. But uh. Yeah, that's 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 where my great games are. But is there any other things from the sixty four, like anything surrounding it that you kind of feel that's worth not- noting? I always remember all the uh, crazy accessories and all the uh, controllers, okay. different controllers, uh, Mad Cats. Um, what is it? The the Super Pad controller. Like, I think it was the one that started the whole uh, weird third party controller memes where. You get the official ones, and then your your friends that come over, or your brother always gets the the janky weird third party. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, those were great, but they're always really cool looking. But yeah, see, I never really, 
I never really had a bunch of the accessories. Like, I, I would have some of the odd, oddball accessories, like the, like, connect to the table type thing and mm-hmm. such, right? And from there, like, that's it. Like, I, like the little tabletop TV thing. That's all I really had. Like, oh, okay. But I've, I've seen so many other ones out there. Like, those, those were kind of cool, and I wanted to try them and stuff. But we already had four different con- controller colors, and then since we didn't share with my youngest brother Mm -hmm. he got his own jungle green n64 with his own jungle green atomic purple and see-through controllers and then made our those man and made (laughs) our matte controllers look like garbage (laughs) and like i honestly think like i honestly think people should get bold with the colors again like it's too it's too oh i want to match my shelves like shut up i want my shit neon green yeah like oh that's what i want I want my, <laughs> I want that '90s sense of style back. Like I'm tired <laughs> of this monochromatic bullcrap. Yeah. Like everything match and blend in and yeah. never be your, or never ne- never be a standout ever again. Like I had to mod my switch so it looked great. Oh, okay. But um, I would like to point out one thing that I I actually thought was really cool and the reason why we actually named our thing this way: the ads, commercials, <laughs> stuff like that. Those, those were, like. It was a weird mix of edgy and campy, like the ones that were doing all the like, the uh, like compilations of the games, like Get Golden Knight, Get Turok, and all that. They did, had some really like edgy, like nuanced, like what is it called, like art house style approach to it. Like, yeah. what is going on? Why are they blue? And why are they doing these poses? And like, people nowadays would see it and like, yes, that means that they were attacking the proletariat. Yes. Yeah, like that's just. <laughs> stupid yeah right like it was just a weird thing like what's going on oh it's just kids on acid and they're colored different that's awesome (laughs) but no like the campy ones the one that stands out for me like i know a lot of people will probably talk about either the soup no super mario one or especially the notorious like smash brothers one right Mm -hmm. the one actually like i thought was really campy in the day was the uh pokemon snap one like you had some wannabe um uh crocodile uh the crocodile hunter type wannabe like snapping photos and stuff. Like, you gotta just do this and you gotta be fast and like quick, take turn around try to take snapping fi- pictures and while all the animate Pokemon just kind of hide and stuff. Oh, and was, okay, I remember. It now. was so <laughs> it was like so campy and it was just hilarious to me and I was like I gotta get myself into this. This is hilarious. <laughs> like it was, I liked those ones and I actually like kind of miss commercials. Like we should probably like really break down more commercials and in, in, in its own thing but okay. i kind of really miss those type of yeah. era where it's not relying on a celebrity to sell you something yeah it's kind of like weird quippy stuff and that was it you know yeah. what i mean like that was i miss those days i miss those days yeah now we got youtube and uh just internet if you if you if you're if you're ever curious about anything yeah you just google it and for the most part you can tell what it looks like and how it'll play like just from a video so well even then like you still got some <clears throat> unique commercials even on youtube and stuff like the dr squatch stuff mm-hmm. that's kind of how how we how i would talk about like it's there's no real celebrity there's some mm-hmm. spokesperson but they're always doing some weird goofy things yeah i mean it's not 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 like it's not something they can't do now mm-hmm. but it's just i miss when it that used to be like the de facto thing yeah. to do so but I would probably say well, that's a good enough count. You got anything else you wish to add? Trading carts. I missed that. Oh, <laughs> trading carts. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could still technically do that, but nobody really does it. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to. No. Billy stole too many of my games when I was seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's probably what happened. Thanks, Billy. <laughs> Jackass. But yeah. I would say uh, probably that would be a good time to stop that. You got anything else? Um, no, we should be good. Excellent. Well, I would like to thank you all remind for listening us. us. If you like, if you like remind, what we have, share our videos. Up. Remind, thumbs up. Got a whole list that are just apparently written two different ways. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we will see you on, on the, the other, other side. side. Hey, everyone. This is Paraka. And Ghost. I would like to say thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like our content, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe and share our video with your friends. You can also follow and support us on other social media such as Minds and Rumble. Links in the description below.